Hi guys, today I'll be installing this shaft extension to my Fanatec DD1. I chose this extension because it preserves the mechanical and data connection between the wheelbase and the steering wheel, which means full compatibility with any updated quick releases, all the steering wheels, and also the tuning menu, which I use a lot. Stick around to see how it turns out. So why spend $200 on a shaft extender? I watched this video by Daniel Morad, which I'll link up here, which sparked my interest, but I didn't realize how useful the extender would be for me until I got my car seat mounted on my rig and encountered a couple of issues. And I just want to add that when writing a piece about shaft extenders, it's really hard not to put jokes right through the video, but the comments section is fair game, so hit me with your best shot. I touched on this in my seat install video, which I'll link up here. But long story short, these seat rails stop the wheelbase from coming any closer to me. And in my preferred seating position, I can't reach the steering wheel. And until now, I've had to compromise by lifting the seat back and having a more upright seating position than I'd like just to hold onto the steering wheel. My preference is to bring the steering wheel closer to me. And thankfully, there are kits available to do just that. This is everything I'll be fitting to my wheelbase today. We have the shaft extension kit itself, the support bracket that I designed, and since the shaft is coming apart anyway, I thought I would fit a Z-ring to the wheelbase as well. Let's start with the shaft extension kit. I bought this kit from eBay from a fellow named Rudolf Krauss who has no idea I'm making this video. So Rudolf, if you're watching, guten tag. The kit comes with a set of printed instructions which are pretty comprehensive. There's a set of cable extensions which are color-coded, which is gonna be really handy when it comes to the install. And this is the extender itself. The locking collar comes off and it has a black plastic sheath, which I think is just cosmetic. And I'll be doing away with that because I don't need it. And this is the extender itself. So it's some kind of aluminum alloy and I'm no engineer, but it looks and feels pretty nice in the hand. And I think it's overall a very complete and well done kit. One thing I was conscious of was that by extending the shaft, the extra leverage would increase the forces transmitted into the motor in the wheelbase. Whether the motor is strong enough to withstand these forces, I don't know, but I was talking to TS Customs, who designs and makes his own Fanatec shaft extension, and he designed his to be 70 millimeters exactly, and not any more to minimize the increased forces into the motor. This shaft extension is 125 millimeters, so it's nearly twice that length. And although the motor is probably strong enough to be used with the extender as is, I actually went ahead and designed a support bracket for the shaft. And here's the bracket in all its glory. This is actually the first thing I've ever 3D modeled in my life, and I'm quite proud of it. It bolts onto the front face of the DD1, and there's a bearing in the nose, which supports the shaft just behind the locking collar. And the idea is that it should reduce any damaging forces transmitted to the motor when I bump or push on the steering column. Now, I am a dentist, not an engineer, so I'm not familiar with the types of forces I would expect in this use case, but I'm pretty sure I completely overbuilt this because it is quite weighty and very solid in the hand. There are some ventilation holes because I didn't want to choke off the cooling air intake of the DD1. And overall, I think it's a pretty neat looking design and I'm looking forward to installing it and seeing how it goes. And finally, this is the Z-ring that I'll install. Ever since I started editing videos in my rig, I take off my steering wheel way more often. And this is gonna be a big time saver because with the Z-ring, I won't need to play with the gold collar every time I take the steering wheel off or put it back on. This is the Z-ring and hex nut straight off the Zappadoc website. These were just downloaded and printed in PETG. And this is a remix of the hex nut that I found on Thingiverse by Maverick440. And it includes these thumb knobs so that it can be installed by hand and I no longer need to use this gigantic wrench when I install the Z-ring later on. So thank you, Mark. I'll include a download link to all of these files in the description. Let's go ahead and get everything installed. I'll start by wheeling in my very high-end work trolley. The standard locking collar gets undone by a five millimeter hex key. And I gently slide the standard shaft off and rest it on the work surface. I had heard that it's quite easy for these cables to get sucked into the wheelbase, which is why I have the clothes peg here, but it didn't really pose an issue for me and the peg really just got in the way. 
what worked best for me was just to work quickly so that the cable connection could go nice and smoothly. The cable extensions go on now, orange to orange and black to black. And now that they're fitted, we don't need to worry about the whole thing getting sucked into the wheelbase. Let's slide them into the extension. And then the extension goes into the standard shaft and we'll get the locking collar on. Being very careful to line up the slit in the locking collar and the slit in the shaft. Working our way back and forth between the two bolts just to make sure that everything's tightened in sync with each other. Now let's tackle the shaft. So we'll take off the gold collar and all the standard quick release bits and pieces. The Z-ring slides into place and then we'll put the gold collar on, making sure that the little nose slides into the Z-ring. And then the locking thumb nut goes on and we'll just finger tighten this and we'll tighten it down properly once it's mounted to the wheelbase. We'll fit the bearing support bracket now and just tighten the mounting bolts loosely because we still want a little bit of play in the bracket at this point. The bearing and a little retention sleeve that I designed then get slid into place. And now that everything is centered, we can really tighten down these mounting bolts. Check that everything is tight and also that the shaft spins smoothly and that looks excellent. And then it's just a matter of putting the rest of it back together. Make sure the locking collar goes on first, reconnect the cables and then just twist and twizzle the connectors and the cables so that everything fits inside. All right, so everything's just been installed and I had my first impressions a few moments ago and I wanna show you this. The steering wheel doesn't go on. And inspecting the Z-Ring shows a very fundamental design issue with the Z-Ring, which I'm surprised is still there given that the wheelbase has been out for four years, the Z-Ring has had 15 iterations and the most recent update to the Z-Ring was in 2020. That made me think that it was a very mature design ready to go out of the box, but the design issue is very fundamental. If we look at the indexing pin of the steering wheel quick release, the indexing pin is trapezoidal. The keyway in the original shaft is trapezoidal. The keyway in the Z-ring is rectangular and the rectangular edges interfere with the sliding of the keyway, which just boggles my mind because I'm, I'm new to the 3D modeling skill set. But in my time designing this bracket, as well as a few other projects that are ongoing, this detail is not something I would have overlooked because it's clearly a different geometry and it also actually makes it not fit for purpose. I went ahead and loaded the Z-Ring STL into Fusion 360 and added my trapezoidal cutout onto the existing design. And I printed that off and let's give it a try. Hey guys, just thought I'd let you know, I actually dropped my camera right about now and I had to send it in for repair. So the rest of the video is shot on a backup camera, which I'm not that familiar on using. So the image quality in the video does take a dive, but the content is still pretty good. So keep watching. All right, so I've gone ahead and printed the updated Z-Ring. I also reprinted some of the red parts in black because I didn't quite like the look of the red. And let's go ahead and fit the steering wheel and see what happens. So it slides on super easy, which is exactly what I expected. And there's a ton of play in the quick release. There's so much more play than with the standard Fanatec quick release. And that's because the bevel of the Z-ring is what secures the steering wheel against the shaft. And that's a very secure way of connecting two parts. It's actually very similar to the way that your wheels are secured to the hub of your car. 
and also the way that dental implants are secured uh, in the jawbone as well. Um, now, Zapadoc make two lengths of the Z-ring, one which is one millimeter deeper, one which is shorter, and they recommend that most people use the one millimeter longer Z-ring. Now, what that means is that that Z-ring actually engages deeper into the wheel, but that part is not the part that gives the secure fit, it's actually the bevel. So the longer Z-ring actually moves the bevel further away from the steering wheel. And so in my situation, I think the one millimeter longer Z-ring is not appropriate for me. And I'll go ahead and redesign the shorter Z-ring, print that out and see how we go. All right, so the new Z-ring is now installed. Let's go ahead and get the steering wheel on. Finally, that's what I was expecting from the Z-ring. The steering wheel goes on nice and smooth and the joint stiffness is as good as the standard Fanatec quick release. I never had any issues with the standard Fanatec quick release. It was just a bit fiddly having to tighten and loosen that gold collar every time the steering wheel came off. But now that the steering wheel is uh, nice and secure, I can finally have some driving impressions of the shaft extension. So let's get driving. Okay, everything's finally back together. I've got the monitors in position. A couple of things, if you can see any of the cables, please ignore them. I didn't do any cable management because I just wanted to go driving. Also, these monitors are set up to a previous configuration and I do need to bring them down and closer to me to suit this new driving position. If these monitors were in the right spot, you wouldn't be able to see my face from where you are because this monitor would be way back here. But let's go ahead and see what the driving impression is like with the Z-ring and the shaft extension. Okay, so first of all, the seat ergonomics probably need a little tweak, but it's so much closer to an authentic formula seating position than I've had so far. Oof. And I'm clearly not someone who can drive and present at the same time. Whoops. But ultimately, Although the ergonomics need a little tweak, the Z-ring and the shaft extension, you wouldn't even know they're there. And, and I think that's to be expected because these are mods that are for convenience, not to alter the actual driving experience. Um, I can't feel any improvement or worsening of flex in the quick release. I'd say it's as good as the standard OEM quick release. And with the shaft extension, there's no wobble, there's no rattle. If I close my eyes, I wouldn't even know that the shaft extension was there, except for the fact that I'm actually in a better, more ergonomic seating position. So I'm gonna put a few more laps in and get a few more impressions so that I can give you guys a, a full on proper conclusion. All right, let's go over some final thoughts. Let's start with the Z-Ring. For what it is and how long it's been out, honestly, I'm quite disappointed at what is officially released out there. The modification that I made took five minutes and really improved the usability of the product. Um, I have both the long and short version modified by me, uh, hosted on my website for download. Uh, that's an unofficial fork of the Zappadoc. I'm calling it version 15Q. And I think it's worthy of adoption as the official version. So Zappadoc, if you want to, reach out to me and let's make this happen. But let's talk about the shaft extension. It's fantastic. The, um, the movement of the shaft, you just wouldn't even know there's anything there because it's seamless. Even without the support bracket, the shaft mounted to the motor spun very true. And I think that speaks very highly to the quality of the machining on the Fanatec motor itself, as well as on the shaft extension. So I think the extender by Rudolf Krauss is very high quality, very, very happy with that purchase. And I'm just really looking forward to finally having this back together and being able to use it in the way that I had envisioned my rig for about a year now. And 
Um, I just wanted to say also, thank you so much to my friends V and Leo. When I dropped my camera, V had a backup camera that I could use, so much thanks to him. And also Leo lent me his 3D printer for about six weeks and talked me through it right from the beginning as a complete novice. And I feel like I really got to quite a good level with the 3D printing and I'm really looking forward to incorporating that more into my hobbies and my day-to-day -day life. So that just about wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that it provided some insights into some of the options out there that you might be considering for your rigs. Uh, I would really appreciate if you could like and subscribe to my channel um, because I really want to keep making this content and growing the channel helps me a lot. See you guys next time.